Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today we're going to be going over the five worst heroes in Dota. Well, okay, maybe they're not the five worst heroes in Dota, but my five least favorite heroes in Dota. I was kind of looking around, so I was looking around at what I should make a video on today. I'm like, what do I want to talk about? I talked about so many of the meta heroes already, where I'm like, all right, I, I don't want to talk about a meta hero right now. I just don't. So what else can I talk about? Well, what about the worst heroes in Dota? In particular, I had such a bad experience with Phantom Assassin recently, which is a hero on this list, that I was just like, I, I can't understand why people pick these heroes. Like, I guess it's for fun or for a challenge. And like, yes, the worst winner in Dota right now is 41% on Batrider. And like, people can stomp games on Batrider. You know what I mean? And Monkey King is like, technically one of the lowest winner heroes and like it was picked by secret plenty you know so it's not that these heroes some of these heroes are completely useless they're not they have their niche cases and they're not that bad which is why dota is a beautiful game every hero is playable i always like to give that preface because it's like speed said this hero is unplayable why did you pick it i'm gonna run down mid now D don't do that don't do that uh but before we get into the heroes i just want to say i um i made a video yesterday uh, just talking about my life and like my goals and and how things were going for me in terms of like my ability to control um, my habits and so on and so on and I just want to say thank you guys for all the like really really positive comments some of you guys directly messaged me on discord and there was over a hundred positive comments I don't think there was a single day like literally not a single negative comment on the video it's so awesome to read I read every single comment I'm still replying to um, as many as I can I'm gonna try to reply to all of them so I really appreciate you guys supporting the channel and uh, supporting me in that as well, and hopefully uh, we can grow together. But either way, now let's get into the five worst heroes, or my five least favorite heroes in Dota. All right, coming into number one, I mentioned it before, but I'll say it now again, and that is Phantom Assassin. I just don't understand what this hero does better than other heroes. Now, Phantom Assassin, in general, has a timing, and it has a break mechanic. I will say that I don't really feel like breaks are that good right now. Like, honestly, I don't really feel like there's that many meta heroes with passives. That's what it feels. I, I don't know. I don't see much Silver Edge uh, directly countering heroes with passives. I just don't. I guess maybe there are exceptions to that. For instance, if a Tidehunter... But Tidehunter's not even that meta. I don't know. Like, I feel like the break on the Phantom Knives isn't that useful. But that's not even the major part of the kit. The whole point of PA is to crit people down. But my issue with PA is this. First of all, this hero has a 47% win rate. So its win rate's not great on Dota buff. On Dota Pro Tracker, it's even worse. I think... PA is somewhat playable in your average pub. Like, honestly, somewhat playable. Especially if you're able to draft it into a couple of squishy supports who can get one shot. For instance, if the enemy team has, like, Rubik, Skywrath. Something along those lines. You get the point, right? And you can one-shot both their supports. PA has some value there. She's going to be able to take a hero out of the fight using her Blur, Vision, Advantage, and Blink Strike. Even then, I, I think you should probably be picking Slark. But let's stick on, on target here. In high moral games, the hero's win rate is 39% on Dota Pro Tracker. Now, it's not a huge sample of games, but the point is, is that the better you get and the more you understand PA, the more you understand that this hero is so damn niche. Because if you don't have a good lane, if you can lane, you don't jungle fast at all. You don't survive ganks at all, right? You don't have a good disengage mechanic. Blink Strike's cast range isn't that good, and it has a cast point. Blur is unreliable. People can smoke and see you using Blur. And it's just like, I don't know. I don't know what the hero does well. I don't feel like it pushes in side lanes well. Blur in high memoir games is extremely predictable. And you can see her killing the wave still. Right? She's not a particularly good laner. I think she really struggles in some matchups. Like, really hard. Um, She doesn't farm that fast. And then even on her timings, like, I, I don't know, man. I watch this hero and... Even on her timings, it just feels underwhelming. It's really hard for her to get to her timings without dying to smoke gangs. And then even on her timings, like, you can't end the game. Like, let's say you're snowballing, you're having a great game, all right? You won your lane, you beat a Beastmaster in lane, you picked off some supports, you've got an Aegis. It can be hard to siege, right? It can be hard to siege because you can't cut creep waves particularly well. You don't siege from a distance. You can't use Blink Strike on towers. I just don't know what PA does well. That's my thing. She doesn't split push well. She doesn't siege well. I don't think she lanes well. She's not like the best team fighter. In terms of burst damage carries, I don't know. I'd rather play Sven. Like, at least a hero can farm fast and, like, has some good lane synergy. You know, I, I don't know. And Warcraft's a good spell. I just feel like PA in her current state, her numbers, 
She was decent for a bit when she had the lifesteal because she became a somewhat sustainable carry in teamfights and in the lane. And then they nerfed the hell out of it, if I'm not mistaken. Right? They nerfed it, like, pretty hard. Which was really weird to me. The hero was barely meta for, like, a week or two, and then it got crushed, which I thought was really stupid. But getting into... But getting into hero number two is a hero that I thought got over nerfed, and that's Kunkka. My problem with Kunkka is his scaling. The hero's laning pretty damn good. Good base damage, Tidebringer's a threat, the hero can gank pretty well early game. Its early game is, is quite devastating in some matches. It's very hard to deal with a level 7 Kunkka. If a level 7 Kunkka comes to your lane and he decides not to leave, you're not going to be able to lane. Tidebringer does too much damage too consistently, or you can't deal with it. So it has its place there, and in some matchups, Tidebringer spam kicks people out of lane. The hero is pretty good against Ember in lane, it beats Puck, it beats Pango if I'm not mistaken, it can beat Invoker, it has good matchups, it really does. Right? Honestly, it really, really does, but my issue is, is first of all, Ghost Ship got nerfed on cooldown so much. I used to be a 40 second cooldown back in the day, that was pretty stupid, the hero is definitely too strong. But <laughs> remember when you could deny with Tidebringer? That was so stupid. I can't believe, he believe the hero wasn't completely busted. It definitely was, but people just weren't good enough. Either way, um, moving on, I just think it's the scaling issue. I think it's mostly a scaling issue. Tybr scaling with Tidebringer has this issue where you need to go in to cast X and, and Torrent and go ship. But in the late game, if you go a build that revolves around Tidebringer, you're not that tanky. You're not. You're just not. If you go multiple Daedalus's, that vibe, which I think is horrible, you're not tanky. Right? You're just not. You can die so easily. Like, your hero doesn't kite well. It doesn't man up to anyone well either. So it kind of has to kite in and out. But that doesn't use Gosha. I just feel like it doesn't... The hero, it's just clunky late game. Like, X combo, because it's such a slow disable, slow combo, it's completely avoidable by BKBs and Yule Scepters. If you have a Glimmer Cape, you can read it. If you have a Ghost Scepter and you're afraid of getting Tidebringered after the combo, you can pop it before you get X-Packed. You know what I mean? Like, the hero is so clunky in the mid to late game. It's so brutally hard to play that even when the hero snowballs off the early game, I'm always nervous it's just not going to be able to pull through. Like, that is my concern about Kunk. I just always feel like it's just unreliable. And yeah, I do think that the Armlet Daedalus build armlet or armlet ac is is probably better armlet ac bkb is like solid and can run around and click people and you can buy an aura item i just don't i, I don't know i'm not i'm not sold i think honestly maybe the best way to play the hero is like some wraith pack variant but then ugh, your spells are just not good enough to justify it i think like ghost ship is cool but the damage reduction is cool with wraith pack like it's, a, it's an interesting concept but i don't know if i'm I don't know. I don't, I don't, the hero's the hero just is hard to play late game. It's hard to feel good on. That's been my experience. Then we have Grimstroke. Grimstroke's numbers are just so bizarre, man. I feel like they just need to buff the hero's numbers a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. It was good for a bit, and like the hero is so theoretically good, but in practice it just doesn't work. It's such a weird hero. It has a slow wave clear, a silence, a stun, uh, a leash. It's like what doesn't Grimstroke do? Apparently everything. Somehow it does everything, but also does nothing. It's the weirdest hero in Dota. It's so odd. It's so odd. Uh, <laughs> but like, a couple things, a couple big problems about Grim is, in pubs in particular, if you if you pick Grim and then your team picks no ink spell synergy, it's so sad. It's your best ability, by far. It's your best ability. If your team doesn't pick a safe laner like Ricky or Jug or... You know, Animage or something like this. Something PA. <clears throat> if some, you know, if your team doesn't pick one of these types of heroes, you're gonna feel so awful. And it's really bad with some of the meta carries. It's like not good with SF in lane or Drow or Sniper. It's like okay, I guess sometimes, but generally it's horrible. The hero's attack range sucks, so it can't trade. Like it can't one-on-one -on -one trade right clicks at all. Uh, its base damage is bad. Its movement speed, I think, is mediocre, if not bad. I think it's 295. Don't quote me. Either way, I don't know. Grim does everything, but like Inkswell's cast range is bad. Uh, the oldie cast range is questionable. It's like hard to follow it up properly. It's just too hard of a concept. And even at the pro level, it's just clunky, man. It's just clunk. Like, it's a clunky hero that just doesn't lane well. Like, it just doesn't. Even though it's so good theoretically in the mid to late game, it's hard to execute, and the laning stage is the big problem. It's just a break. There's no way around it. Like, Inkswell is not an instant stun. The Q is kind of man team fights. The W, you can kill it or whatever. Honestly, one thing I've been noticing is heroes that don't have instant stuns are kind of struggling. That, that's something I've been noticing. I don't think it's fully true, but... 
Yeah, they need to buff the numbers on Grim. And talking about buffing the numbers, this one makes me genuinely sad to put on the list because Pugma is one of my favorite heroes in Dota. I love playing him, but in terms of viability, he's one of my least favorite heroes. They nerfed Nether Ward unbelievably hard. I think they buffed the damage a bit, like slightly, but then they got rid of the um, right the magic damage reduction completely. They just got rid of it. They completely got rid of it. I was like, what? They just, they just destroyed the hero, and then they nerfed the crep uh, to a 7 second cooldown, which makes it really odd. The cast range is worse. Um, and then, you know what the weirdest thing about... Okay, let me talk to you guys about the weirdest part of Pugna. Let me talk to you about the most gross part of Pugna that makes absolutely no sense. I'm looking it up right now. Okay, two things. Two things. Number one is the shard. Okay, the shard increases the cast range of Nether Ward by 350. Great, pretty useful actually to put it on hills. Then from there, you can suck it to drain the people in an AoE, which is not even that bad. It kills illusions, which is the nice thing. But I don't know, just like you can't do 70% damage. It's just not practical. They need to give the hero a new shard. The shard's just generally bad unless you're killing illusions. But the bigger issue here is the axe. It's so awful. It's so awful. The design of it is so unpractical, it's insane. It requires you to buy BKB on Pugna for it to be to be viable. So you have to spend 4k gold on a BKB, which you generally don't want to buy on Pugna. You'd rather just position well, right? Because you have good cast ranges if you buy an Aether Lens. You'd rather position well, but it reduces the cooldown by 3.5, not even to zero like it used to. It only halves the cooldown now, right? Life Drain 7 reduces by 3.5. Then when you're targeting a hero, Pugna reduces their outgoing, reduces the enemy's outgoing spell damage by 8% per second up to a maximum of 75% and increases his own up to a maximum of 100%. When draining through another ward using shard, the rate increase is 4%. Instead, which you might be like, oh, you have some crazy combo where you can suck off five heroes and with the shard, and then, oh my gosh, you're getting 20% damage increase per second. But wait, you can't channel it for a long period of time because it's a channeled ability. You can't just sit there and channel it. it no one, that's never how it works. Okay, that's not true. It rarely works like that. Usually you suck for three seconds, max, and then I have to walk away so you don't die. Or the person's already dead because you blew them up. Oh, why are you trying to suck someone to reduce their spell damage? Odds are, if you're in range of them, they could probably cancel your suck half the time. Like It's so, it's just so weird. Who came up with this? Just get rid of it. I don't know, reduce the cooldown back to zero, at least, even though that shit's bad too. Wanna know why? Because you need the crypt to make life drain good. Just leave. Just make it where it does, like, some stupid amount of damage or something with the eggs. At least that would be interesting. And make the hero scale better. Make life drain... What does it do at max? 220? 300? Three, it does 320. Make it do 550, alright? Make it, make the eggs just make it do 550. That would be cool! Alright? At least it would add up. It would make sense. Or something. It's so sad. It just makes no sense. Alright, moving on. Finally, we have Earth Spirit. Uh, in terms of Earth Spirit... Uh, just pick a different hero. Like, if you're gonna roam, it's just not an... Like, my issue with Earth Spirit is, if you pick Earth Spirit, you still need a hard initiator. Like, if you're gonna smoke gank with an Earth Spirit on your team, you better pray to gosh they don't have a BKB. Like, you're not getting bumping into some hero with BKB, or like Glimmer or whatever, or like Yules, because they're gonna get it off. The rule is so slow coming out of a smoke that they're gonna get it off. The value of Earth Spirit is that the hero can play really, really high tempo. If your team is going like crazy and you're like constantly going for kills, Earth Spear has a place. Best cast range in the uh, initiation range in the game, practically on a low cooldown. Um, so it has a place, but it has to go melee range to stun, which is already kind of a problem because it's not that long, long of a duration stun. You have to go melee range, which is a major risk. You have to keep that in mind. Like when Tiny can stun, he can opt to stun and then protect himself with that stun because it's AoE or toss back. So at least when you stun the person, they're getting thrown so far out of position that it's probably worth your life, right? So it's just like, I, I'd i rather have Tiny in the lane if he goes tree grab. I think Tiny's a better laner. Earth Spirit's Boulder Smash is a decent ability at level one. I think the cooldown's not great if I'm not mistaken. Um, what is the cooldown on this spell? So the, yeah, that's one of the problems. 
Honestly, what I would like to see them do to Earth Spirit to make the hero more viable is just lower the cooldown of Boulder Smash at level 1. They can leave it as... I think they should just make it a 15 second cooldown at level 1, which would make it a strong ability because it is an 120 damage nuke, which is relatively high, but it's only a 1.25 second slow at level 1, which is frankly not that high. But the big issue is it's a 22 second cooldown. It's just too long. Right? It's too long and you might be like, oh, but Avalanche and Toss are like that long as well. Yeah, but he gets Tree Grab at level 1 if he wants it. And tossing people back is absurdly valuable. And Tiny can stun people for like 4 seconds. I think it's like, okay, maybe it's more around 3. He can stun someone for 3 seconds in the mid to late game and reposition them. At the same time and hit a 3 man stun. Like, I just don't... Yes, Earth Spear has its place. It has a silence, right? That silence can be really deadly. Magnetize is a cool spell if, if you happen to stay alive. Which is kind of hard considering you're going melee range to stun people. But um, the hero obviously has its place, right? It's not that any of the heroes I talked about on this list are completely not viable. Like Pugna still has Decrep, which is a crazy spell. Netherward still completely destroys something like Skywrath Mage. You know, every hero has its place and has its game. It's just, if I had to choose a position for it, I would just never choose Earth Spirit. In terms of laning, it doesn't shine. I don't feel like its mid game is particularly strong. If I want like the more high tempo um, four hero that can go crazy, I want Tusk. Right, if I want like a better team fight for, even though like Earth Spirit theoretically is good in team fights, it's like really hard first off, and then I don't know. I, it's I just rather have Tiny for the most part. That's that's my take. It's once again, if you're a specialist on the hero, you can make it look good. I th I, I just worry about it. But alright, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video on my five least favorite heroes in Dota. At least at least favorite in terms of viability because i love pugna i hope they make pugna good it's one of my it's such a fun hero if you haven't played pugna i'd give it a shot uh maybe not right now it's not that great right now but just change the ags valve please but all right thank you guys for watching subscribe if you haven't already gonna be trying to post daily this month with the help of my editor zuko and i'll see you guys in the next one peace